Okay, I did not expect to see this. Forestry researcher Nick Ampersey studying a tree by chopping into it. It started out as a checkup. What's that white stuff? So the white stuff's mycelia. That's a um, fungus? It's a fungus. It turned into an autopsy. We are dealing with some weevil activity here at the base. Every year over the last decade and a half, the U.S. Geological Survey gives 17,000 trees a physical. This is a new dead tree this year. This year is the worst they've seen. Weevils? Yeah. Normally only about 2% of the trees in their study areas die. This year we saw a 13% die. That's a really severe uptick. We've never seen anything like it before. Ecologist Nate Stevenson has surveyed some of the oldest, richest forests in the U.S. and British Columbia. And compared to just a few decades ago, he found that the death rate for trees has doubled. The one thing that really stood out is warming temperatures. We think those are what's driving the increase in tree death rates. So the climate is getting hotter and drier. Better for the insects, worse for the trees. You can see the dead branches, you can see the dead leaves. You can Canadian Naomi Tag has just published a study on die-off in California forests. It's bad here, but she says the problem could get even worse in Canada. A spruce forest in uh, the boreal part of Canada, it's not used to seeing drought, right? So it hasn't developed the same kind of defensive mechanisms to insects. And their research has found that no tree seems to be immune, including these, the toughest, most drought-resistant trees in this forest. Trees that were a thousand years old when Julius Caesar crossed the Rubicon. This is the first time this kind of foliage dieback has been observed since this has been a national park. Giant sequoias. They shrugged off the Dust Bowl in the 30s, but now a significant number of them are losing as much as half of their leaves. To find out just how bad the situation is, a small group of scientists is doing something, well, you just have to see it. Yep, that's a crossbow. That was the perfect shot. It just dropped short. Shooting an arrow with a line attached over a branch so far away you need a spotter to track it. I, I can't see where it went. That's the easy part. Then researchers have to hoist themselves by hand more than 80 meters up into the canopy just to take measurements and samples. If there's a positive from this tree-killing drought, it's this. For these scientists, it's literally a dry run, a chance to improve their models to predict what will happen in North America when this hotter, drier climate is the norm. I mean, this tree here is probably, you know, more than a thousand years old, maybe 2,000 years old. They're really resilient trees, but uh, every species, every organism has a limit. And, you know, in the future, there may be a point where drought impacts become so severe that they shed all their foliage, they stop growing. Maybe at some point they get susceptible to, to insects or disease and start to die back. If they do, the reluctant coroners will be back with their axes. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, Sequoia National Park.